Yeah, the sons of Oklahoma here. Uh, I know it's been a while since I put in put any content out there, but uh, I've got some pretty cool video ideas coming up. It may be a little bit longer right now. I'm kind of trying to work some stuff out with work, and uh, I know moving forward, I think it's going to be pretty cool. But uh, right now, I, I don't make a whole lot of political videos. It's not really my style. But today, it has to be done. We're gonna have to have a little talk here. What I'm doing right now is I'm gonna make sure my revolver that you see here is completely unloaded. There's no bullets in there at all, I promise you. Now this, also, the revolver, you couldn't put a bullet down there if you wanted to right now. Unless you fired it, of course. This video is going to be for us two-way people and are not too inclined for the Second Amendment brethren out there. Unfortunately, this is the same type of revolver that Alec Baldwin had his accident with. An accident which, by the way, could have been avoided simply by checking the gun before he was put in his hands and after. That ought to be the first rule on any movie set. If you ever pick up a gun, first thing you do is you check and make sure that it's unloaded before you handle it. Rule two, never point it at something you're not intending to destroy. And rule three, do not put your finger on the trigger until it is time to fire. Follow those rules. Usually nobody gets hurt. I'll leave it there. That is not what today's video is about. How to put this? You got the cult, the whole Kyle Rittenhouse thing going on right now, right? This isn't about his case or whether he was right or wrong, guilty, innocent. That'll all be decided in the courts. What this is about, though, is what I just seen on MSNBC. I just seen a reporter. Now her job is to put out the news that. Uh, her political affiliates would more prefer. I guess that's the nicest way as I can put it. Now don't get me wrong, Fox does the same damn thing. Democrat, Republican, to me it really don't matter what you are. I'm all about the Second Amendment. Okay? Always will be. She said that self-defense, she pretty much put it like this, it should be ranked up there with being a vigilante. That is the most ignorant thing I've ever heard anyone say. Us 2A people were not born, were created out of a necessity. A necessity really that if men all had good hearts shouldn't exist, but they don't. We're not all born, you know, loving guns and wanting to be John Wayne out there or anything like that. Things happen in our lives that make us become Second Amendment advocates. That make us go out and purchase our firearms. That makes us carry them on us every day, religiously. It's for our own protection. Now, I'm sure there's been a lot of you that's gone through unfortunate circumstances. That's why I have a fan base, because we all love our Second Amendment. But you'll go through, if you're not a, a 2A person, how you become one is like this. You go through a very violent situation, or you see a very violent situation, and it shocks you, and it scares you, and it opens your eyes to reality. The fact is, I can get to this a whole lot faster then I can dial 911 on the telephone and wait the 20 minutes for them to get there. And in my situation, I happen to know that's the exact time it takes for them to arrive after the call. If someone kicks my door open, God forbid, and they mean to do me or my family harm, that firearm will protect me. That is my ace in the hole against someone trying to do harm to me. That is common sense. 
I'm not going to be able to say, excuse me, Mr. Intruder, let me go call the police, you wait right there, and we'll let them handle it from here. You can have a shootout with them if you want to. Please don't harm me and my family. We don't live in Mayberry. It's not reality. And it seems to me that these anti-two-way people out there, they're not living in reality either. And if they are, they're not being truthful about it. That lady may very well go home and take her Glock out of her purse and put it in her nightstand. To be you know, honest with you, that's probably the way it is. Either that or she's got a security team around her. Less well, common folk, we can't afford security teams. I know I can't. I what I get paid. I can afford this though. Now I'm not trying to get it. <laughs> don't take this as a bad pun, but I'm not trying to get all super up in arms about it. But look, let's think about that word common sense. You'll hear that a lot in the two-way debate. Common sense. Well, a non-gun person may ask me, why do I need to carry a firearm? Why do I feel that I need this? Well, I just pretty much explained that with the whole scenario about going through violent situations in the past before that made me into a person that strongly believes and advocates for the Second Amendment. Okay, that may get a little deeper into it then, okay? I can understand carrying a gun for defending yourself, but why do you need a 30-round AR-15? The truth of the matter is this. If you have to rely on a 30-round AR-15 to stop an intruder to be honest, it's less than 21 feet from you, and you need a full 30 rounds to do that. Brother, you should own a gun, and if you do, it should be a single shot. You should go down to the range and work on your ability to hit your target. You shouldn't be shooting anything that advanced. Cold hard facts, the way it is. Why do we really need the AR-15? That is a good question. Now, this is the part where liberals usually tune out. I need you to tune in and open your ears and your mind and have some understanding. We understand where you're coming from. Please try to understand where we're coming from in this. Socialism and communism. I hate to break this to you, but America is a capitalist country. That's just the way we are, it's the way we've always been. We have fought against communism. Anybody that was ever in Vietnam, any of your relatives that ever went to Vietnam, they know that all too well. We fought hard against it. And damn it, we still need to fight hard against it. Socialism isn't that far from being communistic in my opinion. If there was a socialistic person to take the White House, for example. This is all hypothetical, just like that person kicking my door in was. But the reality is, they're both just as likely to happen. If there were a socialist or a communist to get control of the White House and decide that he wanted to pass a law without our vote, without us arguing about it, they call that an executive action. Boy, our past couple presidents love using it, don't they? If that were to happen, and they were to try to take us over, or even if we were to be invaded, right now, do you know how close we are to a war with China? It is scary. Watch the news. Don't pay attention to the politics part of it. Pay attention to the warfare side of it. If you want common sense, look back in your history book and compare what's going on right now to what happened 80 years ago. We're on the threshold, again, of another great big war. But even if the war don't happen, it's all just a tyrannical thing. I can defend myself a whole lot better with 30 rounds from an AR-15 than I can with the 6 rounds out of this. This is what I carry in the street to protect myself from all sorts of dangerous people, wild animals. I can get the job done in those 6 shots if I need to. I'm not planning on having a gunfight. I'm not a sworn officer. I'm not a member of the armed forces. That is not my job to have a gunfight. This is strictly to get me out of there or to end the threat as quick as possible. This is to give me a fighting chance. 
but I'm not going to be able to walk out my door and protect my family against people that are armed with AK-47s and other assault rifles. I might get one or two, but the reality is they're going to get me. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And the thing is, this thing was designed in 1873. You go back and you ask the Native American people that first had to fight against our flintlock rifles. You'll notice how they upgraded from bow and arrows to rifles real fast. The concept is the exact same here. You cannot fight a modern army with less than modern technology. That is also common sense. That's why the AR-15 is needed. Just the same way that the I guess you could call them the pioneers, you could call them the settlers, you, you could call them a lot of things. But the people that founded this country knew that the common people could not fight Great Britain with sticks and stones when they had some of the finest musketeers in the world and riflemen. We won that war because of things like the Second Amendment. All of us had the same technology, it was an even playing field. And I know there's going to be a lot of you that's going to get down in the comments and be like, okay, well, how are you going to stop a tank with an AR-15 or a warplane? Or... And truth is, I don't have an answer for that. I don't. And I don't believe that people need rocket launchers and bazookas in case that happens either. No, that'd be extremely dangerous as well. But that's why there are lulls in place to stop that very thing from happening. You need to educate yourself on the existing and current gun laws. Really look at them, read them well, and understand how they work. And then get back to me with an idea that stops guns from ending up in their own hands. I can tell somebody a hundred times, you're impaired, you are drunk, you have no business behind the wheel of this car, and maybe I can stop that person or the next one. But at that same time, there's somebody five blocks from me. I can't be two places at once. I can't stop that person. Laws already exist that tells that person you're impaired, you shouldn't drive, you're going to hurt somebody, and you'll be arrested if you're found doing it, and you're going to face prison time for doing so, but there's no way I can stop them. I cannot make them make the right decisions. That is the problem in this country. It's real easy to point at somebody and say, that person there shouldn't own a gun. But it is hard to find a law and a fair law that stops all the bad guys from getting guns. Because guess what? Bad guys don't care about laws. Laws simply affect law-abiding citizens like me and you. If you were to take away every semi-automatic handgun and make it to where we all had to carry this, guess what? You're handcuffing all the lawful gun owners, the law-abiding citizens, the 2A people. The criminals are still going to be armed with AR-15s and AK-47s. And just like instead of the government this time, simply the bad guys, we're behind a step in technology. We'll lose the war against crime then. You're only hurting yourself and you don't realize it. I'm not saying that all liberals will become two-way people, I'm not, let's face it, but according to 2020, and the way that the gun sold, a lot more of you came over to our side, and you're starting to realize things now, and if you are a new gun owner, welcome to the two-way community, and I hope you stay a part of it, and you keep fighting for your rights as well as ours, when you talk about the second amendment, it is all our God-given God right, whether you be white, black, Hispanic, Martian even, as long as you're a true red-blooded American, you should have your freedom to carry your firearm to protect yourself and your family. And we all need to hang in there and have each other's back on this. It's a slippery slope. You start taking away one right, then goes another and another and another. Do I have all the answers for all the gun laws that should be passed to stop these mass shootings and these killings and little kids being shot up in schools by AR-15s. No, I don't. God, I wish I do. I wish I knew a way to stop all of that, but that is a problem 
in here and in here. This is an inanimate object, people. It's a dangerous one. But it's even more dangerous in the hands of somebody that's got it all wrong here and here. The majority of us country boys in the South here, we get a little taught growing up. We're taught why you need a gun to hunt with. We're taught how to take care of that gun, how to be safe with it. We're also taught to fight our battles with these. And yeah, there is a time when you have to resort to this, when you have no other option. This is the worst case scenario. This is your last, last ditch effort to save your life and the life of your loved ones. But that's where we've been getting it wrong in this country. Not enough kids out there are learning how to use these. They turn to that first. And that's where we're messing up. Mentor your young people. Teach them the right way how to handle their problems. First, how to talk. You don't even need these. But if worse came to worse, these are still a better option than using this to end someone's life. Especially taking out multiple innocent people. They didn't have a damn thing to do with what's going wrong in your life. That is all on you. Man up, grow up a better person and a better American. That's what this country needs more than anything else right now. We need better Americans. I'll leave you with that.